So today I'm going to do something completely different. I'm not on the water for a change, but we're going to talk about lures and don't buy a lure until you watch this video, especially if you're new to lure fishing. So we're going to discuss all the lures and just what makes fish want to eat these particular lures. So let's get after it. So how fish find lures is completely different to us humans. Us humans, we rely so heavily on our main sensory organ, which is our eyes. We see everything. Even if we hear something coming behind us, we automatically turn around and have to look at what it is because we rely so heavily on vision. But fish, vision's not their main sensory organ. Some fish rely on it quite heavily, especially fish that live in really clear water, like um, oceanic fish like tuna and marlin and stuff like that but it's not even the only sensory organ that they rely on. They rely on a lot of other sensory organs too. What makes fish eat a lure is it either stimulates them or simulates what they're eating. So it's either simulation or stimulation. And I like to use an analogy of a cat I used to have. I used to have a cat that loved chasing lizards and it'd be out in the garden and if it saw a lizard, it'd just pounce on it. It'd, it'd eat these lizards actually. Look, a lizard could be standing still and this cat would still pounce on it, but if I had a ball on a string and that ball wasn't moving, the cat wasn't interested in it at all. I would have to stimulate the cat by moving the ball really quickly and the cat would just, a natural reaction for it would be to pounce on that ball that was moving around. So, stimulation or simulation. Fish are exactly the same. Let me explain. Look at this little bad boy. So last night, Troy and I were uh, walking the edges here carefully, making sure there was no um, snapping handbags. Come and have a look at us. Mm. And we were actually catching frogs. And uh, that there yeah, is flies. a dead representation. Now, this thing's an old Berkeley Frenzy popper frog, which I don't think you can get anymore. I don't even know. I don't think I've actually ever thrown it. But when the best and most exciting thing about when you're coming up north is rifling through all your gear and going, oh, we're going to be on a Cape, Walk, Cape York freshwater river. What have I got in my little collection? And I saw that and I thought, Mm. That's going to catch me a toga. It's going to catch me a barra. So just after seeing the frogs last night, this bad boy's going on. Mm. Very uh, terrestrial insects flying around. So we're going to go to cicada, do a bit of walking across the surface. Let's see if we can get some uh, surface stimulation. Oh, look at you go. The toga too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We talked about, uh, talked about in the previous story, about simulation and simulation. No, I'm stimulated. You're stimulated. Yeah. Very stimulated. I would say that that particular uh, toga thought exactly that was a cicada or a bug. Yep. So we would call that stimulated. Mm. We had a look last night, didn't we? Yeah. Could have been a mate. Now fish have a sensory organ that's like a superpower. It's their lateral line where they can pick up vibrations through the water and every little movement in the water, a fish can actually pick up on this. Some fish, like threadfin salmon, have these tentacles that come out and they're like antenna in the water and they'll pick up vibration with their tentacles as well. There's lots of ways that fish can pick up vibration. And the best example I can use 
is flathead. Now, flathead, they lay flat on the bottom, they bury themselves down in the sand, and they'll bury themselves down to that lateral line. And so their skin or their lateral line is in contact with the sand. Now, every little tiny bump and vibration that happens on the sand around them, the flathead's able to pick up on it. Now, if you want to catch flathead on a soft plastic, the best way to do it is to lift it off the bottom and drop it down again. What's happening is that flathead senses that something's coming towards it. Now, the bump is getting closer and closer, the flathead can sense that, so the flathead's ready to pounce on whatever's moving through the water. He might think it's a little whiting or something like that, just nudging its nose in the sand, having a bit of a feed, moving towards that flathead. And as soon as that lure comes into view, so you lift it up again, it flatters back down to the bottom, bang, that flathead's gonna nail it because it's ready for it, it knows it's coming. It's used its sensory organ, which is its lateral line, to hunt that fish down or that lure down. And in this case, once that lure got into view, the very last thing the flathead did was see it and nail it. So vision is only a very small part of what attracts uh, flathead to that particular lure. It's its sensory organ or its lateral line that it uses more often than not. Fish are so in tune to what's going on in the water around them that even a vortex of a lure going through the water or a fish swimming through the water, the vortex or the vortices that's created from that lure or that fish moving through the water, fish can pick up on that and they'll often turn and follow a vortex and hunt down bait fish or lures just from a vortex in the water. So that's how sensitive fish are. And there's lots of research done on this. So if you want to have a look at it, check it out. But the, whether it's vibration or vortices in the water or anything like that, fish are so in tuned because it picks up, they pick up vibration so well. And how important is that to your lure fishing? Vibration is really, really important. Now other senses fish have, fish pick up on sound, so sound's really important to them, but sound travels five times faster in water than it was what it does in air, and it travels over a really long distance in water. But humans, I don't know a lot about all this, so I'm not gonna pretend I do, but humans pick up on a wide frequency of sound, where fish pick up on quite a narrow frequency of sound. But there's no doubt that some sound in lures attracts some fish, and sound in lures can often scare fish away as well. So um, a good example, if you're fly fishing for trout, you know, using light feathers and you're just dropping them on the water and just moving them through so slowly or even just drifting along with the current of the water, as opposed to if you're barramundi fishing, using a big lure that really rattles. So and a good example of this is a Reedy's B52. That's a big lure and just have a listen to the rattles. It goes on inside that lure. But if you've got a, a lure such as a little prawn lure like this, there's no sound on that lure whatsoever. And look, the last thing that fish use a lot is their sense of smell. And smell is really, really strong in fish. At the end of this video, I'll put a link up to a video that I did with Jeff on scents on lures. So what we did is Jeff fished without any scent on his lure. We used exactly the same lure, exactly the same rod, same line, same everything, same jig head but I put a bit of scent on my lure. Now, Jeff and I are both very experienced fishermen up here on Cape York, so it's not as if he's a much better fisherman than, than I am or vice versa. We just fished for one day out of, in the same spot, out of the same boat with the same lure, but I had scent and he didn't. And that, that, that experiment was really, really interesting actually. I actually caught a lot more fish on the scented lures than he did on the unscented lures. And I'll go into detail in that video on why I think that is. So scent is another one that's really important. You can get soft plastics that already got scent on them, or you can put your scents on your soft plastics, or you can even put some scents like um, the waxy type scents on hard body lures as well. So smell's got a bit to do with it as well. So let's go through some lures and look at why they work. So the main sensory organ that a fish has is its lateral line, it picks up vibration. It can feel a lure or a bait fish or something like that long before it'll ever see it. So that's why little things like these blades, and here's the old uh, Eco Gear, what are these, SX40s or something they are? The old, it looks like a little prawn swimming backwards, but I've got to tell you, a fish doesn't stop and study that for too long. It actually feels the vibration of that thing swimming through the water, and it'll nail it. Another lure that has a lot of vibration is your old typical hard body lures. And we dance these for barramundi in the snags, and you can see here me 
twitching and bouncing of the lure along. And that twitching and vibration is like a wounded bait fish. And a wounded bait fish is a great example of vibration. This prawn lure looks exactly like a prawn. And you know what, that's a great lure. That's the, uh, that's the Zurich prawn. Now, one thing about the Zurich prawn though, it gets a lot of a lot of attention from barramundi when I work it out of a snag, but so often the barramundi will come up to that lure and turn away at the last second and not eat it. And the reason why that is, is it does look real, but something about that lure as the barramundi is just about to eat it doesn't look quite right. And you can look at spinner blades and spinner baits, I mean, and stuff like that as a good example too. A lot of fish in the freshwater up here on Cape York will, will follow a spinner bait all the way to the boat because it's attracted by the blades and it's quite stimulated but when it gets up to it it looks at it and says what the hell is that it doesn't actually eat it it's certainly attracted to it other baits that use uh, simulation crab baits but another one they don't have a great you don't catch a lot of fish on these you tend to catch tuskies and stuff like that occasionally and sometimes they can do really well but a lot of fish will look at this and go, oh, that's a crab. And as they get closer to it, they're just about to eat it. And they go, hang on, it doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't vibrate like a crab. It doesn't do what a crab is supposed to do. So once again, it doesn't have the whole package. Soft plastics like these, these are, um, this is my little box. Um, the, what are they, soft glide baits or something like that they're called. These are amazing because they look exactly like a gar. And they glide like a gar and they get a heap of fish on them. That is a bait that really does simulate the bait fish that they're chasing. But my favorite soft plastic that I use just in general is a little curly tail grub. Now that may not look like a bait fish or look like a prawn, even though I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to simulate a prawn when I use these lures. And just have a look at this little clip here. This is really interesting. I put a, um, a, a Z-Man lure it was actually in front of this barramundi that I was that I sighted when I walked when I moved into this little creek and I swam that paddle tail Z man right in front of this barra and it ignored the lure. As soon as I put this out it sucked it down. I've got a theory from it, but just check out this video first. I don't know if the camera's picking up but there's a big barra just cruising straight over there. Didn't even look at that lure. You can see his tail up and he's just cruising along. I'll put the little soft plastic in. I get these fish to bite today for some reason. Yep, got him, got him. Oh, that's a good power too. Oh, it took some work, but I talked him into biting. Talk him into swimming into the net, that'll be good. Round this way, Jimmy. Oh, got him. So, look, he's, he's probably just on legal, but can't complain, that's a great fish.
So that's a really good lesson. I was throwing this big Z man around all day and I've been throwing it around for about four hours. Um, I've had a few fish roll on it. I've caught nothing. I actually saw that fish swimming through the shallows, just this little junction. And I put the Z man right in front of him and he didn't even look at it. So I put the little curly tail grub on because this imitates a prawn. And I know that sounds funny because people think that fish, fish's main sense is their eyes, but th their eyes isn't their main sense. That's our main sensory organ. We, we have excellent vision, but fish have really poor vision, but they have a great lateral line. They feel every vibration through the water. They can smell and they'll pick up that this is in the water before they see it. And because it imitates a little prawn, the way it vibrates and it bounces along the bottom and stuff like that, when they do spot it, they just suck it straight down without thinking about it because they don't see the detail in it. They just feel the vibration of that little curly tail. They can smell the gulps because they've got a bit of scent in them and they'll suck them down and everything eats a prawn. So that's true. That's what I think is going on with that video. I think that the vibration that this makes because it's little tail wobbles and it bounces along the bottom a little bit too because I sometimes pause it and sit it on the bottom but I jerk it around too. I don't just roll it straight back in a straight line. I make it look like a wounded um, prawn or bait fish or whatever. Now, this, the vibration and everything is picked up by this fish because it can't see it before it feels it because that water was quite murky. But when it got into view and that little tail was wiggling and that thing swimming down and it looks like either a bait fish or a little prawn, it even smells like a prawn or a bait fish or something. It smells like fish because Berkeley gobs have got their um, scent in there. I think that fish nailed that lure because when it got to it, it looked real, smelt real. But when it got to the Z man, it might, may have been attracted by the vibration, but it didn't look real, so it didn't eat it. Now, this is not an ad for Berkeley gob. You use whatever lures you want to use. I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I'm just saying that when it all comes together, these lures work really well. Barra love these things because they look like a bait fish. They certainly do. They rattle, they got everything going for them and they, they're stimulated by the action and it simulates a bait fish. So it works. It's simulation and stimulation. Another lure I use a lot, this is a hard body stick bait. This is the Halco Slide Dog and I love these things because on reefs and stuff like that, they work like a wounded bait fish. So they you sweep your fishing rod and they zigzag through the water and then you just pause it and they flutter like a wounded bait fish and they just flutter down like this. They've got the rattles and everything in them. They look like a bait fish and sure enough, they catch heaps of fish. So another thing that the vortex, the vibration, everything that that lure does will attract the fish to the lure and when the fish gets in view of it, even though it can't smell it or anything like that, it looks like a bait fish. It simulates what they're eating so they'll actually eat it. Now, colour is least important, I think, about all these things. Vibration and simulation is more important than colour. That's a lure I use heaps with barramundi. Now, it's mango season, so all the cockies are in the mango tree. But you've got black spots on it. It's got a pink belly. It's got a gold back. I've never seen a fish look like that. Um, <laughs> these are Leeds lures, and Leeds lures are probably one of my favourite lures because they look so real, they look like it's got scales on them. I've seen plenty of fish look like that. You know what, if I threw both of these in a snag for a barra, this one would probably catch more fish. Why? It's probably more simulation than simulation. So this one simulates a bait fish really well, but something about this lure just fires them up. And this lure, in case you want to know, is um, a cutter far out lures, handmade lures, Bloke in Melbourne makes an Aaron, his name is, he does an amazing job on these lures too, so check them out. Now, the other things that we use a lot of metal lures. Now, metal lures don't smell, they've got a funny vibration, that, that one causes a vortex through it. Um, this is uh, the Halco Outcast, um, and you just crank this thing flat out back to the boat. Probably fish pick up on the, the vortex in the water and eat these things um, really good in clear water. This is a butterfly jig, another one that simulates a bait fish because you lift it up through the water and it flutters back down, lift it up in the water. But this one here, you can sit it in a fish's face too because you just jig it up and down in the one spot. Um, I've never seen a lure uh, bait fish that's got pink with white stripes on one side, um, so the color doesn't matter. Um, crazy vortex lure, for sure. These big marlin lures, they create a massive vortex in the, um, in the water 
Um, I use this on my, if I'm chasing marlin or sailfish or something, this is on my short, um, short rod and I don't know, I've never seen a squid do, what do I troll these things at about 14, 15 kilometres an hour? Um, anyway, look they all work, so look, before you go and buy your next lure, don't buy a lure that looks natural um, because you think that's going to work because it's got to have everything else going for it as well it's got to have the right vibration this thing doesn't vibrate at all the only thing that this lure has for it and don't get me wrong it's a great lure it's the Zurich um, live shrimp or something like that great lure but the only thing it's got going for it it looks exactly like a, like a shrimp and if you kick it it kicks like a shrimp although shrimp often kick backwards so you could rig it up backwards I suppose if you wanted to but that's the only thing going for it I've I catch a lot of fish on it, but some days the fish will just turn your nose up on it because it's not quite right. That doesn't look like anything really, but that's probably my most productive lure. Not probably, that is my most productive lure. Hard body lures for Barra, you can't go wrong with them because they've got everything. They've got the rattle, they've got the vibration, they've got the twitch, which are wounded bait fish and they look like a bait fish. Barra just eat them. So look, think about all that sort of stuff, simulation, stimu stimulation, Think about the vibration and the fish's main sensory organ is its lateral line. It wants to pick up on the vibration before it eats a lure. So give it a crack.